Maria, do you have any advice for working the business side of herbalism? You know, I really think that you need to honor who you are and what kind of a person you are as an herbalist and as a business owner, because everybody's going to do things a little bit differently. And the way that I do things might really not resonate for somebody else. But I do think that in business, it's nice to keep, you know, you've usually got a lot of things going on. In fact, I was listening to um, one of your most recent, and you'll have to remind me what their name was, that just uh, just got published on the Herb Rally page today, I think. Uh, um, oh, Alex, Queef and Pain. Yes. Alex, yeah. um, so Alex was talking about the idea that, you know, as an herbalist, you're not just an herbalist, you're also an entrepreneur. And so yeah. you're going to be doing a lot more than you probably realize you're doing on the business front of things. And so it can be tricky to keep all of those things in line of whether you're doing bookkeeping, paying your bills, checking in with your clients, keeping track of numbers, um, you know, just all the different ways in which we need to function to run the business in addition to also doing our work as herbalists. And so I think that it can sometimes be a little bit overwhelming for folks. That's where for me, those lists come in really handy to keep track of what are the things that I need to do today, this week, um, but then also having whatever those bigger long range goals. Because usually I have something big that I also want to be doing in addition to my day to day. And it's nice to keep your eye on both of those things so that you don't lose track of either one. And so it's a little bit of a juggle and however that works for you. So, you know, really listening to what is working or not working for you. And you can always revisit, you know, if you start to do something, you're like, this is not working. I am not able to pay my bills or I am doing a bunch of things and business looks good on paper and people are, you know, loving what I'm doing and I'm doing great work, but I am miserable and my work life balance isn't great. Like you can always revisit and readjust. So it's not like you're tied into this like one way of doing things. It's good to keep reassessing periodically and just seeing what's working and what's not. And it's a constant shuffle of trying to make it be what's right for you. But you also don't need to be all things to everybody. And I've heard plenty of other herbalists say really similar things. And I know for Camille, who does such a great, I love Camille's um, work. And Camille Freeman does a really nice job encouraging people to focus, distill, um, not try to do too many things, but to do a few things really well and letting your inner intuition kind of guide you in what those things will be. And so I don't know if I've answered, you know, exactly what your question was, but I think those are all some things that come to mind for me on that business side of things that can be really helpful in the big picture for folks. It's definitely food for thought. And uh, just to kind of comment on it, uh, I will say when I used to work at Mountain Reserves in the customer service department, a lot of people thought that what I was doing was running through giant fields of lavender. Uh, <laughs> uh, as in, you said something earlier on in the question or in your answer about there's a lot of, you know, detail oriented drudgery and, and uh, monotonous, uh, boring accounting work, say, and, and that kind of stuff. And it really does. It's super important, too. And that's actually one of our current struggles right now is we're figuring out a lot of kind of this back end, you know, accounting tax stuff, since we're still relatively new in our journey here at Herb Rally as far as like being our our thing. But um, yeah, but it's all super important. You have to do it. Um, that aside, uh, I just wanted to kind of highlight that. Yeah, it's not all fun and games and running through fields of lavender. I was curious, uh, you're a huge list maker, as am I. Um, but one of the main tools that we use is something called Rike, which is a project management software. Do you use any sort of project management software to keep everything organized? That sounds really cool. I yeah. don't. Um, I yeah. use a bazillion lists <laughs> and mm -hmm. a lot of spreadsheets, yeah. but I think there's so much good technology that's coming out now that um, sometimes it's hard for me to wrap my brain around a different way of doing things. I know I tried to sure. use books after having spreadsheets. And after a couple months, I said to my CPA, like, I'm really sorry, but I'm going <laughs> to buy spreadsheets because this isn't working for me at all. I, I can't wrap my head around this different way of keeping track of everything. But um, so I use, I use lots of spreadsheets that I've created, but there's so many great, can you tell me a little bit about this 
this particular one or like what it does? Sure. Yeah. So basically, uh, we actually used it at Mountain Rose Herbs, which is how I was introduced to it. And I too, as my former boss, Rachel will tell you, I was very apprehensive to it at first because I, I was, uh, yeah, lists. I liked the little check boxes on a digital list. Um, and it was very hard for me to transition over to your point though, if, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. Like it seems to be working for you, but still, yes. Uh, the main thing for me, why I really like say project management software is because you're able to set dates associated with particular tasks. And then there's a lot of other, you know, fun, uh, aspects to it as well, but that's the main thing is to, uh, it's hard for me to actually set dates assigned to specific tasks on a, on a checklist. Um, but, but yeah, that's, that's why it works for me. I know a lot of people like say like Trello or Monday.com, but Rike was always what I was used to. So, and that's okay. W R A W R I K E. And this is not a sponsored Rike ad. Yeah. <laughs> I did just recently, and it was actually a Camille Freeman tip, um, convert as I started to see new clients again, it had been several years where I was too busy teaching to, to take on new clients. And so I finally got a project management software for that. Mm. Um, and so that's been the big transition this past winter, which has been pretty cool. I mean, I'm, there's still things that occasionally I'm like, hmm, I've got my own, I've got a list of things to suggest to them to add <laughs> to the program yeah. that eventually I will send them once I, you know, I don't want to overwhelm them with too many emails, yeah. but, um, but overall, I think it's a pretty cool program. So that one's practice better. And Camille Freeman has some really great blog posts out there on it. If people are interested, it's definitely a hurdle to get into, but it, it has been really great to automate certain aspects of the business and the HIPAA compliance mm -hmm. for clinical work. It's always tricky as an herbalist because we're not legally recognized as a health professional in the United States. So we don't necessarily need to be HIPAA compliant in our software, but it's a good goal to have. And, um, and especially now that more and more things are becoming more electronic versus phone calls and in office visits and paper filing, um, the opportunities for things to not be HIPAA compliant is so much more. So that was one reason, but also I just wanted to have a more automated business since at least for the clinical work, um, that's just me over here and uh, trying to manage everything else. So that's been been a fun little adventure this past winter. So yeah, you teach, you're an author, and sometimes I forget or leave out the fact that you're also a clinical herbalist. So you're currently seeing clients then. I am, you know, that will sometimes ebb and flow depending upon yeah. what I can take on. Because when you're working with clients, it really does require a lot of focus. I spend a lot of time with clients, probably more time, you know, per appointment than I should, just because I really like to think and process all that information. But, and I am an overthinker and an overdoer, but people are complicated and they, they deserve and need more time sometimes. And so if my schedule is really busy with other article deadlines or book deadlines or class deadlines, then I don't feel like it's fair to clients for me to try to shove folks into these little tiny windows. I need to still be available for them when they need that support. And so sometimes I'll have to scale back, but I've really missed working with clients. And so I purposefully scheduled this winter to be mostly free of classes mm -hmm. so that I could take on clinical work again. And I've really enjoyed it. And I'm hoping that by setting up some infrastructure that I'll be able to see clients more regularly, even once the, the classes start back up again. It almost seems as if you keeping up your clinical practice sharpens your sword in the sense that it keeps you, uh, you know, up to date on I don't know, it just helps probably your writing and just your teaching and everything. So yeah, they they all feed each other every now and then yeah, I think sure. oh, I need to let go of something because it's too much. Yeah. And it, it is not a bad idea to be focused in your practice, yeah. but they do all feed, you know, the writing could then inspire some of the articles I wrote would get turned into class notes, which then would become classes. The clinical work helps inform that what I'm teaching in my classes and writing in my articles actually is true <laughs> and works um, and isn't just all theoretical and you know the the classwork can sometimes inspire articles and interacting with students and clients 
is always really informing and, and teaching me more things about herbs and that intersection of herbs and people. So if I had to give something up, I really don't know what, what I would give up because <laughs> I really love all three aspects of that. And I feel like they work together really well. Yeah. It's like that stool analogy, you know, keeps oh, you balanced. Yeah. Um, yeah. Well, if you ever uh, feel overwhelmed uh, with what you're doing, just make more lists. <laughs> yes, that will totally help. Um, I, I've been like hiring some help. <laughs> so I have a few awesome people who work with me now, um, but it's still mostly me doing a large part of the work. So, um, so yeah. Sounds about right. <laughs>